Hey guys, Sean C. Phillips here. Welcome to my April 15th DVD update, where I talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays that I received a review and talk about for you guys over the last two weeks or so. Like I say, guys, enjoy these update videos. Definitely give this video a thumbs up. Leave me comments below what you guys thought of the titles I checked out and reviewed this update. Any titles coming up as you guys like me to review for future updates and some of the titles you guys have picked up recently. Uh, the first one I got here from Shout Factory Scream Factory line. I have to say this is probably in my top five, uh, you know, anthology movies of all time. I love this movie so much. I've watched this movie so many times. Well, you know, when I heard they were doing the Blu-ray of this. I got really excited about this one. This is the brand new collector's edition release of Tales from the Hood, which has really, really cool new commissioned artwork on this one. Love this artwork. And then, you know, also has the reverse artwork of the original artwork as well, which I always love that cover as well. This is one of those ones, too, that was always out of print, the DVD, you know, uh, so it's been out of print for years. But this was such a cool movie. It's basically, you know, like I said, it's an anthology movie, all set with an urban setting all in the city. And it's basically, though, these three guys who are going to a funeral parlor because they find out that the the old man who runs the funeral parlor, this really strange guy, his character is amazing in this movie, is he's Clarence Williams, um, Clarence Williams the third, you know, who is also in Half Baked and tons and tons of movies. But I always think of him from this movie in Half Baked. And the movies basically though they go there because he says that he found these drugs and they're going there to try and buy them off of him for cheap. And then why they're in there, he goes around and shows like there's like dead bodies in like, you know, since the funeral parlor in the caskets and weird little artifacts and stuff. And he goes around and like tells them as they're walking through to find the drugs, he goes to, you know, tells them like the stories about how people died. One of them was about like a guy who died from, um, these really bad cops, like these racist cops that killed this political figure, and, you know, he comes back from the dead. Uh, the, one of my favorite stories on here was about this kid who, you know, so had this monster that was in his room, and like this really creepy tale, and like David Alan Greer is in that one, and he plays like you know David Alan Greer. You always think of more for like comedy type roles, and like he plays this terrible, terrible, mean, abusive, awful character. And like he never really did anything else like that similar style playing this kind of character since then. But he was so good in this and so creepy. The other one on here was about this guy who was you know running for mayor, and he like had a terrible like racist past and he moves into a plantation house that has like this like curse above you know on the house because all these slaves had you know died there and their souls were put into these little dolls and like it's you know that one's like a one about these like kind of like a puppet master kind of thing about these like little like creepy little dolls that are coming after the guy and then the last one on here was about a guy who you know got put in jail you know, he's basically, you know, jail for life for murder, and they have like a rehabilitation where if he goes to this rehabilitation and gets rehabilitated, he will be let out, you know, early, but he has to go through this insane type of rehabilitation that he goes through. I don't know, this is just, to me, such a cool, creepy movie. The music is really cool, and I also feel like this movie really holds up well. You know, a lot of the themes and stuff like that that they're talking about in this one are still going on now, and some stuff even more these days, you know, with certain things in this movie and it really holds up and really works I, I hope one day the director does a movie like this again because like he really was cool did a really great job on this with, with a horror movie I think this is only horror movie that he ever directed I think but he was so cool he also plays the teacher in this movie and this has on here though a making of Tales from the Hood which is I think it's like 45 minutes or so and they have you know the director on here uh, the writer on here um Corbin Bur Burnson, which I totally forgot that Corbin Burnson was the actor who plays the really like racist um, political guy running for mayor. Like I, I totally forgot that was him because he like he was wearing this wig and had like a really different look. But this is just such a great movie. If you guys haven't seen this one, highly recommend this one. Really great transfer on here. Just such a cool you know movie. The next one here from Screen Factory as well is a movie called Tank Three. Uh, Tank 423. This was a pretty interesting movie. This is basically, though, about it, it kind of like jumps right into the movie and then it kind of goes back and forth between kind of letting you know exactly what they're doing out there. But it's basically about a group of these soldiers in kind of like a small, small town kind of area. And you can tell like that there's something going on in this town and they're, um, you know, there's like, they have like these prisoners with them and they're like, you know, that have like these bags on their heads and you really don't know exactly because they're all covered up. You don't know what's happened. You know, they're trying to transport them and they end up out there 
And they discover, though, all these other dead soldiers and these dead prisoners, kind of like their group of people, like out in the middle of this area, this kind of small town area, and they don't know exactly what's going on. And they see sort of like a weird type of like character coming towards them, this weird person. They go in and hide out in this tank, this like really old tank, and they go and kind of like barricade themselves inside of this thing. So most of the movie is set inside this tank. So it's got that real claustrophobic kind of vibe. So the movie's kind of like you trying to figure out exactly what is going on here? What is this war? And like, what you know, who is this person outside of there? And what is going on? And it's like things get consistently worse and worse for them. It's a pretty interesting movie. Like, I always like these kind of movies that are all set inside of those kind of settings like that, like all like a, those kind of claustrophobic feelings. And it has like a weird type thing about them, like I said too, so they f discover these areas that are, these people that are kind of just like their group, but they don't know exactly what happened to them. They don't know what's going on. So it's kind of that kind of movie when you kind of find out more and more as it goes on. But pretty interesting movie here though. And the next one I got from Universal is uh, M. Night Shyamalan's latest film, Split, which I absolutely love this movie. I've actually always really loved all the M. Night Shyamalan movies. I think like one of the only ones I didn't really like when it came to like his science fiction horror type movies was The Happening. Like that one just wasn't great. It had sort of an unintentionally funny aspect to it. But you know, it was watchable, just not my favorite. But the movie that he did before this as well, I really liked, um, you know, The Visit. I thought that was probably one of my favorite, you know, top favorite found footage movies. And I also liked too, that they added these like kind of comedic aspects to it. There were like really strange stuff going on. And, you know, if you know his movies, too, they always have, like, twists and stuff like that in them, which I always think is kind of cool. And this movie, too, you know, without saying anything about what it connects to, the thing that's kind of cool about this movie, too, is it has a connection to one of his other movies. So that's another thing that I really liked about this was this connection. And I remember when I saw this in theaters, too, people who, like, you know, so, you know, didn't even pick up on that. Like, if you don't know his films and you haven't really watched all of his movies, you might miss that. And I feel like a lot of people miss that. But the movie, though, is basically about this guy who has these split personalities when he, and he has like, I think it was like you know, 23 different personalities and they're all these different kind of characters. Like one's like this woman, one's this um, guy who's like a germaphobe, um, one's this kid, all these different personalities and they're all like, one is crazy, they're all crazier than the next. The kid is the most normal of all of them and these three girls end up getting kidnapped by this guy and they get put up in this weird like basement type fallout shelter type room. You don't really know where this place is but they're like, you know, trapped in there and locked in, and he's like coming in there and saying, "Oh yeah, there's big things that are planned for you. There's very big things, and and like, and it all depends too on the which character comes into the room and starts talking to them. Like I said, sometimes it's like the germaphobe, sometimes it's the woman, and the woman character's like, "I don't worry, I'm not going to let them touch you, and nothing bad's going to happen to you. I'm in charge here." And they're all like kind of doing all this, and then he's also going to his therapy sessions, and the therapist is like, "Who am I talking to today? I don't know." They're there's something about this movie that was extremely creepy and like the whole thing about them trapped down there and not knowing what's going on and I don't know I thought too uh, I always say his name's wrong but it's like I think it's James, Mc James McAvery I think I, I always screw up his name but he did an amazing job playing these like, distinctly different characters and there's like just something about this that I thought is probably probably one of my favorite ones of his you know, the, um, you know, Emma Shalon movies probably to watch. There's just something really cool about this one. And I feel like he's like totally back to like true form with this movie. It was just so well done. Like this is one of those movies that I really love so much. Um, and it has on here though, an alternate ending in, on here. It has deleted scenes and it has an introduction with the, you know, the director on, on those. And then it has a making of split, uh, a thing on here with, about James McAvery, you know, McAvey, or I'm always saying his name wrong, but all the different characters that he plays, you know, and then a thing on here talking about M. Night Shyamalan, like his eye for his films and stuff like that. But really cool release here. Really, really cool movie. Definitely looking forward to seeing what M. Night Shyamalan does next. Uh, the next one here from Lionsgate is the brand new, this is, you know, the 4K Ultra HD edition of um, La La Land. And, you know, this movie was up for tons of uh, Academy Awards, like Best Director, Best Actress, uh, Best Film. And, you know, like I said, this movie is called La La Land. You know, really cool artwork on this one. It, like, shines like this. And this, you know, I actually really love this movie. And, like, it was the first, you know, uh, big musical movie in a really long time. Like, the last, like... I can't remember what the last like big musical was before this, like maybe Mamma Mia, which I don't I know that was up for a best picture as well. I'm pretty sure years back. Um you know, this is from the director as well who did, you know, Whiplash, which I somehow I don't think I, I never actually saw Whiplash. So I really need to see that movie. But this movie stars Ryan Gosling and um, Emma Stone. 
It's basically, though, like I said, it's a modern-day musical. Because, like, I remember when I first saw the trailer for this, I thought it might have been, like, set, like, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, something like that, because it kind of had that look, but no, it was all set now. And it's basically, though, about... Um, there, you know, uh, Ryan Gosling is a guy who's like a musician. Uh, Emma Stone's character is, you know, trying to be an actress in L.A. She goes to L.A. to try and be an actress, and she's having all kinds of problems, you know, not having the greatest luck. And she ends up meeting Ryan Gosling's character. And they kind of keep on bumping into each other. That's the kind of interesting thing about the movie. They keep on seeing each other. They And they kind of at first had like a really kind of a bad meeting and kind of yelled at each other and didn't get along. But then they kind of start seeing each other more and more. And they eventually come, you know, to have like this relationship. So it's kind of like about their ups and downs of what's going on and ups and downs with their li life and their kind of problems. And, you know, going one way and doing other things and all these kind of things. And it's kind of just like their whole experience with what's going Going on. It's got a very, very, some sad aspects to this movie as well, but was extremely well done. The music in this was also too, because like a movie like this, it really relies on the music, because it kind of goes in like, at first, I kind of thought it was going to be way more musical than it was, because like from the first song, but it's kind of like, I would say maybe like 25% of the movie is, is kind of musical, and then the rest is just, you know, narrative story, but, it's like, but it kind of jumps into like, to kind of just, to, you know, have a mood or a certain thing that goes into a song, and uh, I don't know, like I said, I really like this one a lot, I thought this was really well done, it has on here three hours of features on here, tons and tons of like making of stuff on here, uh, thing on here talking about the freeway scene when they had to close down the freeway, because they had like a big scene, the opening was on the freeway, has a thing on here talking about um you know the the look of you know the movie uh talking about John Legend who acted in this movie this is his first movie acting um you know thing on here a marketing gallery a commentary track on here with um the composer and the director on here so tons of features on here really really cool release the movie looks really good on 4K cuz this movie has lots of bright colors like 4K the big thing is you know the high dynamic range which is about like the colors like brighter colors and you know uh, more contrast levels and you know it definitely is one of those it really pops in 4K because it really is a very, very colorful movie. Uh, the next one here, this is one that I, I had a lot of people, saw a lot of people talking about this one, like posting about this one online and really wanted to see this movie. And this is from Lionsgate as well. This is a movie called um, The Girl with the Gifts. This is definitely a very interesting zombie movie. Really, really cool music in this movie as well. Like these really, really cool vibes to the music. The movie definitely has a feel of like Day of the Dead. It, 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 like the most like Day of the Dead feeling movie in a long time. Like it's definitely got that sort of feel to this. Because like a lot of it's like in the beginning is set underground. And the movie is basically though about this, like, this huge zombie outbreak going on outside and, you know, they're, they're underground doing experiments, and Glenn Close's character plays this woman kind of like the, 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 the uh, you know, the doctor, uh, scientist character in Day of the Dead, who's, like, kind of crazy and, like, trying to find the cure for this and studying brains and studying, like, the creatures and stuff. And the thing that's different about this one is it's the... Um, they have in this facility they have like sort of like their test subjects are these children and for some somehow they discover these children that are basically able to they're kind of like a hybrid between the zombies and just like regular children and they have the ability to learn and they're being taught in this facility and they keep them you know, in a wheelchair, tied down, they have their head strapped back so they can't attack anybody, and these kids are, like, 100% normal, then if, if they, like, smell like a human, or, like, you know, then they kind of start going crazy, and there's these insane stuff of when they're, like, zombies, when they're, like, moving their mouth in these crazy ways, I don't even know how they did it, I don't know if they did some of it, like, digitally, because it's, like, it's got, like, this really... Like, it's kind of like almost like we worry they would get lockjaw the way they were going so crazy with their mouths and this, like, these crazy, like, biting and all this stuff. And that was, like, a really cool aspect. And, like, and like I said, it's basically, though, centers around this one girl who's, who's one of the people who's being studied down there, one of the kids. And she's, like, a really nice and, you know, kind of, like, trying to, you know, this is all the, the only life that she knows is being down there. And it's kind of just about uh, what ends up happening with these kids. And, you know, very early on, they end up having to leave for one reason or another. And it's kind of like this mission that's going on because of what had happened with all these zombies. But I think definitely when it comes to zombie movies, I think this is the best zombie movie in a really long time. They even say the best zombie movie since 28 Days Later. And I do agree that this really is has that sort of 28 Days Later feel mixed with Day of the Dead. And I like the aspect that it was like these kids as zombies that could kind of be controlled. And it's just a very 
very, really, really cool movie. It has on here, though, a featurette in this movie, but I love this movie so much. Like I said, too, the music was really cool. Uh, the next one here from Lionsgate as well is one called uh, Arctic Adventure on Frozen Pond. I don't think there was ever, I don't think this was a sequel as far as I know. I don't know for certain, though. It's an animated movie, and it's got the um, the, the voice actors on here, or t the two guys from Smosh. And I think they did voices on um, the Angry Birds movie as well. And they've been doing, I think they might have done one or two other movies doing voice work. And, you know, John Lovitz is also in this movie as well. And it's basically, though, about, like, this kingdom. The characters were kind of reminding me a little bit like a frog or a little bit. And, like, I can't, I can't say for sure what else they were kind of reminding you of, the, like, the look of these frog creatures. I don't know if there's another movie I can remember that was like about like a kingdom of frogs or not. I feel like there was something sort of similar, but it definitely, like I said, has that frogger look to the characters. But it's basically about this this girl who's kind of like the queen of um you know the, of this the, this village. And there's this one certain type of artifact kind of thing that they're trying to get back because they believe that if they get this, they can kind of save the village because there's these kind of like bad characters and the bad things starting to happen in the village. And they kind of think that if they can find this certain thing and, you know, bring it back, then they can kind of like make everything better again for all of them. So it's kind of like this girl who really wants to go on this journey to try and find this. But the father is like, you know, no, don't do that. Don't leave. You have to be here. You know, he's really against the whole thing, but she kind of defies him and goes on this journey to try and find this so it's kind of like that whole thing and like this adventure type movie kind of has those kind of um I'm trying to think, like I'm trying to think of what it was reminding me of, but it has that same type of like sort of like an '80s kind of a kids adventure movie, like you know trying to find something and bring it back. Definitely more of a kids type film here, but still was a fun movie though. I said this one is called Arctic Adventure on Frozen Pond. Uh, the next one here, and this one I, I left the sticker on this. This one is going to be one of those ones that's an only at Walmart release. This is a movie called Isolation. And this, you know, stars Stephen Lang, who was, you know, recently in Don't Breathe. And, you know, Dominic per Perchel, you know, who's from um, Prison Break. This movie is called Isolation. And this is a, a movie about, like, basically about this couple that is out, like, on a trip. I think it was, like, um, it's like a... I don't think they just got married. I can't remember for certain, but I know they're going on like a vacation, like in, in, in the middle of like the in the island. Or I don't remember. What, it was like somewhere in the Bahamas. But basically, though, in the beginning of this movie, though, you see these these two people, Dominic Pacello's character and the girl that he's with, and they end up like it's coming to Stephen Lang's character's island because he's like on this small island and he's kind of like what are you doing here get out of here and then it cuts to right afterwards this other couple that's going on a trip out there and they end up you know staying on the island where Stephen Lang's character is in this like um kind of like cabin type place right there by the water they're out there everything seems fine but the movie like it takes a little while to like have like the main thing happen like the last 30 minutes is where it's like a whole big to do and what's going on but like really all you can say is they get to this island and then something happens and things are stolen from them and it becomes like this huge nightmare that's pretty much all you can say to the to the couple that are there and then you're trying to figure out exactly what is going on here that's really all the essentially the story was but like i said the, the last 30 minutes though is where it really picked up and like really had like a whole thing happening, but you really can't say too much about that without ruining everything. But I actually thought this was actually kind of interesting movie. I always like these kind of movies like set on islands and stuff like that. And this was all set on this like small little island, and like uh and like I always like Stephen Lang as well. Like I said he was on Don't Breathe. Like I said though, this one you can only get at you know Walmart. The next one here from Anchor Bay, this is the movie starring Michael Keaton. This is the movie called The Founder. And I saw this one in theaters as well. It's actually a really cool movie. And it's uh, like the whole story about the Ronald McDonald brothers. So I never knew all the stuff that went on. The two brothers who created the Ronald McDonald, you know, McDonald's, and they started as this really small company, and then they started trying to franchise on their own, and it really wasn't going well. And Michael Keaton's this guy who's kind of going around not really having a lot of luck. He's selling, like, shake mixers and kind of just going around to restaurant to restaurant, little small cheeseware places and diners and stuff, trying to sell this you know, equipment, not having a lot of luck, having a couple orders here and there. And then they get this big order for this place. 
you know, a couple of units and, you know, it's the McDonald's, you know, brothers who are getting this for their restaurant. So he goes there because he's like, what is going on here? Why are they having the, all these orders? And, you know, normally they, I think they ordered like three or four of these mixers and he doesn't know what's going on. So he goes out there to check it out. And of course he meets, sees the McDonald's place and they have this really tight ship of, you know, making the burgers and they have this assembly line and all this stuff. It's really efficient. And he goes there and he has this idea that, you know, this needs to be a franchise. And the brothers are like, oh, it did, hasn't worked out before. Before, but he comes up with the thing that the plan and says this is going to work and but it it deals though with the true story though about Michael Keaton's character kind of like doing some really heinous stuff to these brothers with their company and like kind of going against what they say and making his own decisions with the company and that's essentially what it is is just him kind of like taking control and the whole like rise of the McDonald's industry and like he like the you know his character was basically the guy behind the whole thing it was a really interesting movie though uh Laura Dern is also in this movie and you know I don't know, I, I really thought this was a pretty interesting movie, like with the whole thing I knew nothing about, the whole behind the scenes with all the bad stuff that happened with the brothers in this business. And the next one here from WellGo USA is a movie called uh, Punching Henry, and this movie has on here Sarah Silverman, uh, J, you know, J.K. Simmons. This is about a guy, you know, the character named Henry. He's a guy who kind of does like, travels around and does like comedy, but he does a lot of like parody type songs. Kind of like the stuff almost like you would hear on Howard Stern, like when people do like parody spoof songs and stuff like that. He does like comedic kind of songs, goes around and performs these and does some stand-up kind of stuff, but it's mainly all in the form of songs. And he's never really had a lot of luck. You know, he's got, kind of performing in small clubs, not making much money, not having a whole like really doing too well with the whole thing he's got done a lot of shows where he's bombed and not had you know really the response that he has hoped and he ends up getting this call from his agent that this one guy who's this tv producer wants to meet with him and he basically you know played by jk simmons plays the tv producer and he's like trying to pitch this show about this guy he basically goes to the meeting because he thinks oh this is going to really launch his career and he's finally got something good happening for him but he goes to this meeting the pitch meeting for the show that he wants to do it's about this like this comedian who you know has had no luck he's like you know having all kinds of problems and people kind of look at him as a joke and you know he basically is kind of trying to decide if he's going to go and do this show or not where he kind of makes himself look like a disaster and points out all of his flaws and all this kind of stuff and it's kind of him decide, trying to figure out if he wants to do this and be kind of the butt of the joke and be on the show that's all about like poking fun at him and making a joke about his whole career and how he's like a loser and all this kind of stuff and it's, and it's kind of him when he's in LA and it also deals with the kind of stuff of him trying to perform shows there his relationship with his friends there and all the kind of stuff that's going on but it has on here though deleted scenes on this one um it's actually a pretty funny movie, though. Like, I, I I like the concept of this. And the guy, you know, who plays Henry was actually pretty cool in here. And it's just kind of like his life and trying to figure out what he wants to do and if he wants to take this offer or not. The next one here um, from the National Geographic. And this is a uh, new documentary series, but it's like documentary in a way, but it's like done like a documentary, but it's also like, um, you know, set in the future, like in 2033 about kind of what could happen, but it's a movie called, or a series called Mars, and it's basically, you know, Ron Howard produces this uh, series. It's basically set in, you know, 2033, and at this point, they're getting ready to finally go to Mars. The mission is going up, and it kind of cuts back and forth to, you know, um, you know, 2016 about, like, what they had to do to get to Mars and get to this point, and, like, the studying they had to do, and the stuff with, like, the ships and on the invention and all that kind of stuff to get to that point, and it's, like, them on the mission, you know, in, you know, in the future. It's, it's definitely done in a very interesting way. I don't know if, I don't I feel like National Geographic had really done any other shows like this before that were kind of like like a series kind of thing, I, at least as far as I can remember, you know, and it has the whole thing about them going to space and kind of what happens up there and the problems they come across and all those kind of things. It was definitely an interesting kind of thing. And, you know, you know, definitely like, you know, like I, like I said, I don't feel like they had done anything like that in the past. Has on here though, uh, behind the scenes on here, uh, making of episodes, uh, interviews with the cast and crew. So lots of different features on here. Um, 
like I said, a pretty interesting thing here. Uh, the next one here from the Warner Archive collection is a interesting movie here called um, From Hell It Came. And this is one of those ones that was kind of like if you saw like the opening to Ernest Scared Stupid when they played all those like really cheesy movies like when he's like real scared. This is kind of like one of those movies that would have been on that. It's one of those like really, really ridiculous type movies. And it's um, basically though about like a tribe and like I think it was set in Hawaii, like an island in like the middle of nowhere, like somewhere in Hawaii or Bahamas or something something like that and um the guy kind of like did something wrong to one of them and they, they blamed him for the one's brother and they put a curse on him and kill him and he comes back and he's like basically before they kill him he's like I'm going to come back and I'm going to seek my revenge on all of you for what you're doing to me but he comes back as like a tree like a big walking tree and he kind of gets revenge on people on the island and the scientists on the island like studying the island trying to figure out exactly why people on this island are dying off because the guy that gets killed and turned into a tree is blamed for the death of the one's brother and it's and he's like no it's the plague is going on here and they're trying to the scientists trying to figure out what's going on but it's kind of this one coming back as this tree creature kind of wrecking havoc on the island and you know attacking people and it's like this really really super cheesy tree creature it's a really really fun ridiculous movie you know really good transfer in this one this is one of the you know like i said the warner archive releases here but like if you guys like those like super cheesy ridiculous type creature type movies definitely check this out the next ones here are the um, limited edition releases. These are from Vinegar Syndrome. The limited edition ones have these really cool, you know, uh, slip covers on these ones. This is the movie that Adam Rifkin directed. This is when he used to, you know, back in like, um, I think this was like 92, and he used to have that character that he ca had called Riff Coogan, um, you know, which was kind of when he would do like horror movies under that name. And, and like, he did a couple other movies under this name. I, I hope that one day he doesn't, and I know he's always talked about wanting to do another like movie under the Riff Coogan name. I always liked the stuff he did in that character because they're just like, like he even talks about this on the making of, they were kind of movies that he did for fun and he didn't really have to worry about them being perfect or anything they were just kind of like silly over the top kind of crazy movies this is um psycho cop returns and it's and funny is i don't know if psycho cop one ever came to dvd or not i don't think i ever saw the first psycho cop movie it doesn't matter though this isn't one though where you have to see uh the first movie to understand it at all it's basically though about this like it's sort of like Maniac Cop. It's about a cop who's kind of like disgruntled and kills people. And, you know, Miles Dougal's character uh, is like talking to his friend in this diner and he's talking about how oh, the drugs and he's mentioning about having this party in the office building where they work at and did you have the weed and you have all the drugs and stuff. And the psycho cop hears about this and looks at him really like a, a terrible look on his face. And of course, though, psycho cop comes back to where they're having the party at night in their office building because of what he had heard. So he goes in there and he's like killing them off one by one on there and there's like really really ridiculous crazy deaths and the cool thing about this is this is the movie's finally released uncut because this was released on dvd you know years back in this really really censored version like all the gore was edited out i think some of the the, the alt language and stuff was cut out i can't remember but it was like a weird edited print so finally now the movie's released in an uncut version and has on here though a 43 minute making of on here which has interviews with the actors on here you know has miles dougal adam rifkin talks about this a featurette in the movie movie you know, talking about, um, you know, the effects and stuff on this one, but a really, really cool one, and as usual, Vinegar Syndrome too. a really great transfer on this one. The next one for Vinegar Syndrome as well is a movie called Double Exposure, and this has an another one with a limited edition uh, slipcover on this one. This one's only limited to a 1,000 copies, this slipcover. This slipcover one is limited to um, 1,666 copies, and this is a really interesting, strange movie, and here's the, um, the other cover underneath of this one, but this is like a really interesting movie it's basically though about like this guy who's a photographer and um you know people like women and stuff in the city are getting killed off and dying and stuff and he ends up getting these like having these really strange dreams where like the models and stuff that he photographs are you know getting killed and he's like strangling them and killing them and stuff like that so like, he's kind of like having these awful dreams and waking up and like from these and not knowing what's going on and why he's having these but of course though then people that he's dreaming about you know that he killed end up actually being found dead and it's kind of like this weird thing about the cops trying to figure out who it is you know the killer and what's going on in the city and all these people getting killed off 
And you know, you only and you don't, you're wondering who is the killer? Is it this guy? Because like when you see people getting killed, all you see are these hands strangling the people. So it's, it's a definitely pretty interesting movie. Like I said, I had never seen this one before either. It has on here though a uh, brand new 2K transfer on here. Really, really good transfer on this movie. It has on here a commentary track with the director, um, and then as well as an interview with the cinematographer on here. Uh, isolated score, and this movie does too some of these really trippy effects too, like in the beginning of the movie and stuff, and throughout the movie, these really weird slow type effects like kind of like photo type kind of effects going on but definitely an interesting weird movie i had never seen before and the next one from seven films is a movie called dark waters which is actually kind of interesting too because this movie's from 1994 it was definitely a very late film for like a non-sploitation films because like they did a lot of those nun type films in like the like the early to mid 70s and then they kind of stopped in like like 83 84 something like that and they so this was like a lot later and this was like a real throwback to those type of films and it's basically though about this coven of these really weird nuns this whole group of these odd creepy nuns and um this one girl whose like father had passed away was always giving money to, to this church to these nuns. So the girl ends up going there to try and like see what this place was like and see if like the because like the gifts are going to still continue the money and stuff. But she kind of just wants to see the place and she gets there and she like discovers like these weird things are happening here and these nuns are like doing like you know killing these people there and like all these crazy things are going on. So she gets there and of course like weird things start to happen to her while she's there and there's these some really creepy scenes of these nuns and like these like rituals that these nuns are doing and I don't know it's just a strange movie and the movie in the two has some really really cool cool music in this like the score in this movie like this really cool synth and stuff and I looked it up the guy and it's like the, o the only movie that he did music for and it was like really cool music but it has on here a commentary track with the director on here a uh, featurette and like this is also based on a Lovecraft story H.P. Lovecraft story uh, it has on here some other featurettes as well a director's intro uh, deleted scenes a blooper reel on here and some um, short films from the director as well. Uh, the next one here is another nun film. This one is from 1980. This is the one that the director of this one did that movie called um, Rats, you know, Night of Terror. And I always kind of like that movie. And like... Um, this movie is called The Other Hell. It's another one of those crazy nun movies. And this one is about like a nun that ends up killing someone and it ends up dying. And then they end up, um, uh, the priest comes to the, like, the church and kind of starts to try and investigate what is happening there and try and figure out exactly what had happened to this nun. And hopefully I'm not mixing the two up because they're both two nun movies. But I'm pretty sure I'm not mixing these up. But then he goes there to try and figure out what's going on there. And this one too had like, very creepy nuns as well. Like this main, like real bad nun that's doing stuff to the other nuns. I always like these kind of crazy nun movies. There's a couple other ones called like, the, I think one of them we called like The Killer Nun. And a few other like known ones. But I, I like the director's other movies. Like his movies kind of, some people don't always love the director's stuff. But I'm pretty certain that he did... Um, you know, Rats, and he did, like, I think Hell of the Living Dead and a couple other ones. This one has on here, though, a um, a, a commentary track on here with the co-director of this one, interview with the the one of the actresses that played the nuns, as well as a couple other interviews on here as well, but a pretty cool, another, you know, creepy nun movie. The next one here, this one's from a company called Motur Moturo Entertainment. I'll put a link, though, below where you guys can get this one. This is a found footage movie called Chuka Chuka Chup Chupacabra Territory. And this is actually kind of a different chupacabra type movie because it wasn't like what I was thinking and I kind of like that it went in these weird directions it also had some really weird kind of comedic aspects to this movie as well this stars Sarah Nicholson in this movie and it's basically though a group of you know in the beginning of the movie you see that this footage was found and the people were kind of presumed dead they don't know what happened to the people they were filming this this footage and it's a group of these friends who go out trying to film a documentary on the chupacabra and the legend of the chupacabra they go to this area where they were kind of seen they go out there and, you know, they're told by the forest ranger not to go in there. This place is dangerous. The trees are falling down. They kind of think, oh, he doesn't want us there because he's trying to cover something up. And that's why he doesn't want us to go into this, you know, this area, this these woods type areas. And, of course, though, they go out there and they're kind of filming the things and strange things start to happen. And, like, um, and it's, it deals with all these weird things. You see someone weird lurking around out there and you see, like, um, if you get, like, the chukacabra, like, 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 residue on you, like, the blood or the weird, like, stuff from it, like, weird things start to happen. You start doing weird things. And it, it definitely takes, like, these weird turns that you were not expecting for this movie. Like, like I said, these kind of, like, comedic-y kind of odd stuff that you were not expecting at all with this movie. I kind of really like this movie 
a lot. And I liked it too because it wasn't at all what you were thinking with, the, with some of what it did. But it has on here though some interviews on this one and then a photo gallery. But pretty cool movie here. Uh, the next one here from Umbrella Entertainment. This is like two movies together on one from the same director. These are two documentaries. And has on here... Um, Electric Boogaloo, and um, you know, which is the making of uh, the story of Canon Films and Machete Maidens, which is like the movie about um, filming, you know, documentary about all the kind of things that they filmed in uh, the Philippines. Like uh, they filmed all these horror movies and these kind of cheesy type films because it was kind of like a, a cheap area to make films. So they made all these films in the Philippines years back. Um, the the Canon film movie documentary though I really like that and I didn't even realize how many movies Canon films had made like during the heyday they were like producing like I think like 20 something movies at the same time and stuff like all these different films and it's basically like talking about the whole story of Canon films and how it started and it kind of leads up to the, the demise of the company and how things started to fall apart and because of all the movies they were making things you know they started losing all this money and had all these kind of problems and it's like it kind of goes through the majority of their films and kind of tells stories about them tells like a, some making of stuff they have interviews with the cast of some of them it's actually a really cool documentary a lot of people pop up in the documentary to talking about the movies there was one canon film that i really want to see about like this really weird um like a monkey creature, monkey character, like this, like in this kid, you know, with Dom DeLuise. Like, I don't think it was ever released. I think it was only ever on VHS, but it looks like a really weird one. It has on here, though, a lot of different uh, features on here, you know, some making of extended scenes, uh, red carpet stuff, all kinds of features on both these ones. But really cool one. And like I said, these ones too, I don't think either of them were released in Blu or in Blu ray in the US. And these are also all regions. So you guys, you know, can play this one. It's a region free release. Uh, the next one here from um, uh, MTI is a movie called Seizure. And this is like, a, I think this one is going to be in Redbox as well. And this is an interesting movie, though. I was trying to figure out exactly what was going on in some of this movie because it was the same girl or not. Because, like, it's basically something that happens in Romania when they, like, will you know kidnap women and, and basically that have like certain markings and use them to try and, like, perform these type of rituals and, like, it doesn't end up going well in the beginning of the movie and the one girl ends up kind of like the woman that's performing these rituals this real creepy woman she ends up getting shot and killed by the guy because the ritual isn't working and it's really these people are trying to take i think it's the same girl and trying to take her and like get her to a certain destination and then like they, they all die and these people kind of take her the, the other group of people take her out to this cabin out in the middle of nowhere and then odd things start to happen to them. They start seeing like really weird visions and like seeing this girl kind of up and walking even though she's tied up to the bed and like creepy odd stuff starts to happen to them. So that's essentially what it is. It's just like this really creepy, peculiar thing going on about you know trying to sell this girl and these weird rituals and all this kind of stuff. It's definitely like a different movie. Like I feel like I haven't ever seen anything of this kind of context and like stuff going on before. And the next one from um, MTI as well is a movie um, called Whispers. This is like a real old school kind of throwback, like 80s kind of like European, like gothic kind of horror type film vibe. And uh, the beginning of this movie though, um, I, you have, you have to, to figure out exactly how the beginning of this stuff plays into the movie. Um, Cause it's like something happens with this one kid and the, um, the one brother ends up dying in the bathtub. And then it's like right afterwards, you see like later, it's a different story. And this one uh, woman who's like moves into this, um, you know, what this couple move into this like place in the middle of uh, this house in the middle of uh, England and um, in Europe. And they basically, though, like the one child had recently died, their child had died. So they're out there. And then like the woman starts like to see like weird images in the house and weird images of this this one girl and trying to figure out what's going on here of course it's like she moved into this like haunted house that has like a bad history and she's trying to figure out exactly what's going on here and she's seeing like weird stuff like she's seeing like a cradle in the house and like she's saying to the husband why did you put that in there you know and like why are you trying to torture me and like it's definitely an interesting kind of movie like just all these weird things that are happening to her the one actress in this movie as well as the one who was in Hostel you know the Hostel films and it's a pretty interesting movie, though, like a, a weird kind of concept of what's going on in here. Like I said, too, you're trying to figure out exactly, like, how the two stories kind of connect together. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for this uh, DVD Blu-ray update. Thanks for watching and subscribing. I'll see you guys later.